now the energy is going to get what? Released. It's got to go somewhere, right? And so that's one source of the uh, effect that you're seeing in this bar, right? Is that the change in length of the elastomer is storing energy, which actually makes the 25 pound dumbbell more than 25 pounds, right? And that's called inertia. There's all kinds of things associated with that. But the other thing that makes this thing a challenge, in, in addition to the energy that the elastomer is storing and releasing in the bar, which you're managing, right? Because sometimes what happens? You're moving and the elastomer lengthens. And what do you feel in the bar? The storage of the energy, right? And then what happens? You've got to manage that storage of energy, and then it releases. And then you've got to manage what? Oh, no, the change in direction. Right? So you've got a change in direction as well, or an unloading of the uh, load that you're feeling. So you feel the load, and you don't feel the load. And you feel the load, and you don't feel the load. Well, the other thing that's happening here is called rotational inertia, uh, which is related to torque. Does anybody know what torque is? Torque? What's torque? simple word for what? Influence on rotation. So anything that's trying to turn you is called torque, right? Crowbar, get a, get a crowbar, right? When you get a crowbar, what do you do? Try to get underneath there, when you, you turn it, and when you're farther away from the crowbar, what does that mean? Who's it easier for? Easier for me, right? And so torque has a physics equation, which is the force times the moment arm, which is simply the distance that I'm grabbing the crowbar from the place the crowbar is rotating around. Does that make sense? And the farther away that I am, the less force I have to put in, right, to turn the thing. Well, that's what's happening at these shoulder joints, is not only do we have an increase in the elastic energy that the band is creating, which changes how much the weight of the force feels to you, but we're changing the direction and the amount of torque. That's why this thing is so crazy looking and feels so wacky. Is the, the rate of change of torque and the rate of change of the direction of that torque is happening very fast, right? And so, if I've got a tube over here, and he's got his arm over his head, like this, and I'm pulling down on him this way, is there a lot of torque on his arm, on his shoulder? Right, does his shoulder want to rotate very easily if I had it pulling down this way versus me pulling that way. You guys see this? If I'm pulling this way, can I rotate him? If I'm pulling this way, can I rotate him? No, I, I, I can't rotate him, right? And so that's what's defining this. So the place he rotates around is called a what? An axis, right? Here's the axis, right? Then his shoulder's rotating around. And when I'm pulling this way, how close is my line of force, this elastomer? to that axis. Really close, isn't it? And the closer it is, in fact, if it's crossing that axis, it means there's not going to be any torque, no matter how much I pull. His shoulder's not going to move. But as soon as I do what? Get him out here, what happens? I'm winning, aren't I? Why? Because I've got a big distance now that I can rotate him from and around relative to where he rotates. And so this crazy thing is doing what all the time? What's it doing? As the elastomer is bouncing around, what's happening? Right? And in one moment, right, that thing bounces down and it goes in this direction. So what does his shoulder have to do to react to me? Got to go back that way. The next moment, the elastomer releases the energy. Now it's over here. And which way does he have to go to react to me? Yeah. The opposite way, right? So that's what's happening here. 
And that's really where the more important part of this exercise is coming from. Not so much from the energy being stored in the elastomer, but by what? The constant change in torque that is happening at the shoulder joint. So what do his muscles have to come? What does his nervous system have to do moment to moment? It has to figure out what? How to change direction in reaction to the direction the crazy thing hanging off the bar is going. Does that make sense? And so torque plus, plus the elastomer and the energy, now you're talking about the dynamics of the bamboo bar. And we can't even have time to go into the physiology of why he's seeing the physiological effects that his clients are experiencing in terms of improved what? Control, motion, and stability. There's all kinds of physiological reasons why. This constant change in torque per unit time, plus the change in elastic energy, the fact that the force on the bar is changing moment to moment, is giving him a unique challenge. Now, when you watched him do this, and you saw this with um, whoever came up and tried it the first time, Put a line back. The other concept is degrees of freedom. I'm going to take these off. Okay. I got it. You got it? Mm -hmm. Degrees of freedom. How many ways can the system that I'm applying the force move? Right? How many ways can I go? And in this particular situation, the shoulder joint has what you'll learn pretty soon has three degrees of freedom, which means I can move in what? This way and this way and this way, right? I've got lots of ways I can, I can move. <clears throat> well, in this situation, how many ways can he move, right? He can move this way a little bit. Can he move this way a little bit? Which way does he have the greatest amount of displacement in a degree of freedom? Which way did you go? She immediately went which way? that way, right? This way was a little easier to manage, right? Because if I take this bar out of his hand, bring your arms up, how far does this arm go? To the, right about there, right? Goes to right about there. And right? that's when he's not holding the bar. This one goes to right about here, right? So how much motion does it go here? Some, but not very much. As soon as he grabs the bar, what happens? It's called restraint. It actually keeps him from going in this direction very easily. This way, how far does this arm go that way and this way, right? So, you know, that, about that far. But how far can I go this way and that way? So from a degree of, pers a degree of freedom perspective, which does he have to control the most? <laughs> Flexion and extension, right? So that's the thing to watch for. And if you're going to evaluate your clients before you put them on this thing, you want to see how well they can control flexion and extension, because what happens to torque, right? If he's holding this, and the weight's going this way, does he have a lot of torque on his shoulder? If he gets out here, and which way does the weight want to go? Right? Where's his axis? Do we have torque on the shoulder? Right? This thing wants to keep doing what? Rotating in that way, right? So he has to catch it and stop it way down here and pull it back up, back this way, and then it starts going this way too far, and then he's got to what? Go back this way, right? And so when you're playing with this bar, that's the primary degree of freedom to be concerned about, understanding that. What the person is really managing is what? Torque or rotational inertia. And the farther this bar is away, the more it's going to try to rotate it from his shoulder based on the direction of the force. Because that's what exercise is, right? Creating scenarios of torque for your client to manage. Now, we're only talking about what joint? Like a humeral joint, right? There's another joint here, isn't there? What's the other one? AC joint and a sternovoclavicular joint. Those joints are also having to manage this whole situation. And they have their own degrees of freedom associated with their anatomical structure. And so when you talk about dealing with this bar from a safety perspective,
perspective, make sure your clients can control flexion and extension, because if they can't, you're going to see very quickly what happened. Whoops! Right? Huge amounts of torque, because it's just like stand, foot stand up. It's no different, except that he has his whole body supported on the bench. Then if I started here, right, and he's got it, right? And what happens when I start coming out here? He cannot stop me. Right? He's got increasing torque. Same thing in the other direction. And this is the problem, because how far does his shoulder go without any force on it? About there. So if I've got a force on him that's doing what? Pulling him farther in the direction he's already what? Maxed out in, what do we got? Hyper. We got hyperextension, we got injury, right? So that's why that spotting technique he was showing you was absolutely vital. When you first give somebody this bar, be right on top of them. Because how fast can torque get generated in the system? Split second. Next thing you know, they're down here, then they what? Want to get the other direction going, then they go up here, and now this thing is out of control. And that's why you don't need a whole lot of weight on this thing. Because with a fixed weight, the weight's always going what? Down, down, down. But with this crazy tube, it can go what in one second? That way. Then it can go this way. Then it goes down. Then maybe a little bit that way. Right? You saw that thing bouncing around. So that's the real power of this particular system. The combination of the fact that the force on the bar can be changing subtly. But more importantly, that it's changing the torque or inertial rotational profile on the shoulder joint system, let alone when he's standing up. That, that's why standing is so tough, is what's easier to push over? Something that's got a big base and real low center of mass, or something that's really tall with a small center of mass? How come that thing's so hard? so easy to push over. Why? And not so easy to push this over. Why? Anybody know why? How come I just have to do this to that thing and it's gone? Because the center of its mass is what? Pretty far from where it's supported and its base of support is pretty small. Right? So those are the key physics variables to keep in mind <laughs> when you're trying to prescribe this particular modality to different clients is trying to anticipate what are the physics of the thing and can my client even manage the physics of this thing. <clears throat> and that's what um, is the key idea behind all of exercise. You're just giving your clients physics problems. Mm -hmm.